Welcome to the University of Dundee's orthopaedic clinical skills video for examination of the foot and ankle. Upon entering the room, introduce yourself and confirm the patient's name and date of birth. Explain what the exam involves and confirm the patient's consent. Ask if the patient has any pain in their feet or ankles before starting. The patient should remove their shoes, socks and expose their legs to knee level. Start the examination with inspection of the patient's footwear, looking for orthoses or insoles. Look for walking aids. It is important to wash your hands thoroughly to prevent the spread of infection. Now examine the feet in the standing position or seated position if this isn't possible. Observe from all angles. Look for evidence of localised swelling or bruising in the context of trauma. Is there a valgus deformity at the great toe metatarsal phalangeal joint known as hallux valgus? Are there any lesser toe deformities? In rheumatoid patients, note any features classic of this condition, such as atrophic skin, curling of the toes with MTPJ dislocation, or hallux valgus. Examine the medial arch. Is it flattened, described as pes planus, or high, described as pes cavus? Inspect the forefoot. Is it wide? Inspecting from behind, is there any significant heel varus or valgus? In cases of heel varus, is there an associated pes cavus? In heel valgus, is it associated with too many toes sign? This is when, due to flattening of the medial arch, more toes are visible laterally on the affected foot than on the contralateral side. Is the heel valgus flexible? That is, does it correct when the patient stands on their tiptoes? Whilst the patient is standing, ask them to perform a single leg tiptoe. Weakness may indicate a tibialis posterior insufficiency or tendo Achilles rupture, depending on the nature of the injury. Stiffness of the great toe MTPJ, a condition called hallux rigidus, may prevent them from completing the test. Now perform a brief but useful functional screening. Ask the patient to adopt the ski position. This requires ankle dorsiflexion and first MTPJ extension and is a good screening test for ankle stiffness, tendo Achilles shortening and first MTPJ stiffness. Now ask the patient to walk and observe their gait. Look particularly for difficulty weight bearing in trauma cases or an antalgic gait. Look for the high stepping gait associated with perineal nerve injury or a slapping foot associated with the tibialis anterior weakness. Also look for ankle or first MTPJ stiffness. The patient is often best examined on a raised bed with the foot at a comfortable height for the examiner. If this is not possible, a seated position with the examiner kneeling is useful. With the patient on the couch, examine the plantar surface of the feet. Inspect for callosities associated with areas of high pressure and often an accompaniment to mesotarsalgia or ulcers associated with diabetes. Now move on to palpation of the ankle. Start with the lateral malleolus. Then palpate the lateral ligament complex anterior, distal and posterior to this bony landmark. If syndesmotic injury is suspected, perform a stress test which if positive will exacerbate discomfort or produce excessive movement. Palpate the anterior joint line. Palpate the medial malleolus and the deltoid ligament. Finally, palpate the tendo Achilles. Palpate the base of the fifth metatarsal, a common site of fracture in the acutely presenting patient. Palpate the first metatarsal head Palpate the lesser metatarsal heads along the plantar surface. Palpate both the dorsalis pedis pulse, palpable over the dorsum of the midfoot just lateral to the extensor hallucis longus tendon, and the posterior tibialis pulse, posterior and distal to the medial malleolus. Perform a brief neurological assessment of the foot by assessing sensation in the distribution of the deep perineal, superficial perineal, medial plantar, lateral plantar, and sural nerves. Now assess range of movement. Beginning with the ankle, assess maximal dorsiflexion and maximal plantar flexion. This is communicated in degrees from the plantigrade or neutral ankle position. Immobilizing the ankle joint, 
now assess varus and valgus movement at the subtalar joint. Think of the movement of the midfoot occurring in two joints. The first is the Chopin joint. This is the joint between the hind and midfoot, comprising the talonavicular and calcaneocuboid joints. This joint allows AB and AD duction of the midfoot. The second is the Liz Frank joint, which is the joint between the mid and forefoot, and comprises the tarsometatarsal, intertarsal, and intermetatarsal joints. This joint allows for rotational movements and can be tested by mimicking these movements passively. Look for discomfort or stiffness. In the forefoot, assess movement of the first MTPJ. Include the grind test if there is swelling, tenderness or stiffness of this joint. This test, in which the first MTPJ is axially loaded and the proximal phalanx is rotated, will exacerbate discomfort in patients with first MTPJ pathology, such as osteoarthritis. Test the flexibility of lesser toe deformities. Finally, and as appropriate to the patient presentation, there are several specialist tests which may be useful in the foot and ankle examination. Muscle power can be tested. Test tibialis anterior with resisted ankle dorsiflexion. Peroneus longus with resisted ankle plantar flexion. Tibialis posterior with resisted foot inversion. And peroneus brevis with resisted foot eversion. The stability of the ankle can be assessed by performing the anterior draw test. Gentle and progressive forced foot eversion and inversion will test the stability and integrity of the deltoid and lateral ligament complexes respectively. In cases where you suspect a Morton's neuroma, palpate the web spaces and perform Mulder's click test. Grasping either side of the forefoot, squeeze the foot to compress its width. In a positive test, a palpable click is present, often associated with a shooting discomfort. Finally, in cases of suspected tendo Achilles rupture, perform Simmons test. With the patient kneeling on a chair and their legs and ankles relaxed, squeeze the calf. With an intact tendo Achilles, the passive contraction of the gastrocnemius will produce ankle plantar flexion. In tendo Achilles rupture, this movement is not seen. The foot and ankle examination is now complete. Thank the patient, help them with their clothing and footwear if required, and then explain the relevant examination findings. Ensure you wash your hands before leaving the examination room.